The BYD Atto 3 is quite a quirky electric vehicle, and we'll be touching upon why a little bit later. But what you should know is that it starts from roughly £37,000 and extends up to roughly £39,500, at least at the time of filming and in the UK. Now in this review you can see if it's actually worth its price tag and of course how it compares to some of its key competitors. But before proceeding, we'd just like to thank Antcharge for actually sponsoring this video. More on them a little bit later. So to kick things off, let's talk about its electric range. And here as standard across the entire trim range, you've got a 60.48 kilowatt hour battery pack and a heat pump that comes included as standard, which is certainly appreciated on those colder days. Now, when it comes to the mixed WLTP test cycle, the vehicle is rated at 260 miles. However, from my own mixed driving test, I netted between 210 to 230 miles, which in my opinion is actually a respectable figure. As you'll be able to see here from the mileage leaderboard, it's not exactly the best, nor is it the worst in its class. And also if you consider its overall price tag, it's actually not too shabby. Now, funnily enough, I actually netted better efficiency when I was on the motorway, which I found quite strange because for most electric vehicles, it's the complete opposite. Nonetheless, over here, if you were to drive a little bit more economically, you'll be able to net over 240 to 250 miles. Now, for you to be as efficient as possible, you want to enable a degree of regenerative braking. And here, there is the standard and high mode presets. Now, right now, I'm on the high mode preset, rolling at 30 miles an hour. And if I were to lift off the accelerator pedal, the vehicle will start decelerating. If I were to flick it onto normal, the vehicle will not decelerate as much and will feel like coasting. Now, I wish the manufacturer had included a means of one pedal drive. In other words, if you lift off the accelerator pedal, it comes to a complete standstill. It makes driving within the city a little less cumbersome and is a feature that is present on some of the rivals out there. Equally, it would have been great to see a further degree of customization with the use of, let's say, flappy paddles or options that you can select via the infotainment system. And that's not, that's not the case on the BYD Atto 3. Now, of course, you do have the ability of plugging it in. And here, via CCS port, it'll take up to 100 kilowatts of input, therefore allowing it to go from 10 to 80% in 44 minutes. You have also got an 11 kilowatt onboard charger, although it's not present in the entry level active trim. This allows you to go from 0 to 100% in 6 hours and 30 minutes. On a regular 7 kilowatt wall box, it will take you 9 hours and 42 minutes, while a 3 pin input will take you over 35 hours. It is also worth considering that the BYD Atto 3 does also have vehicle to load charging fitted as standard across the entire trim range, therefore allowing you to discharge the battery pack to another electric vehicle or of course the power household appliance. Although it's worth noting over here, you will require an adapter. Speaking about charging, this perfectly brings me on today's sponsor, Ancharge, a free app that enables you to share your charging experience and even regularly rewards you. Ancharge is the most trusted platform for rating public chargers. By contributing to the app, you'll be helping others find the best charge points and also actively improving the charging infrastructure by providing key information to operators such as BP Pulse and Source London, among many others. Better still, the app is fun to use, as you can compete with others by earning points. All that's required to sign up is using an email, so all your data also remains anonymous. If you download the Ancharge app using the link below, you'll even get some starting credits. Next up, we get onto performance, and here there is a front-mounted motor which dispatches power to the front wheels only. And combined with its 60.48 kilowatt hour battery pack, the BYD Atto 3 has a power output of 150 kilowatts or 201 horsepower and 310 newton meters of torque. I actually had it tested using Race Logic's performance box touch from 0 to 20 miles an hour in just 2 seconds, 0 to 30 miles an hour in 2.99 seconds, 0 to 60 miles an hour in 6.83 seconds, which is actually faster than the manufacturer's claim from 0 to 62 miles an hour in 7.3 seconds, and 50 to 70 miles an hour in 3.52 seconds. I also clocked in a peak acceleration of 0.48 Gs. As for top speed, it is limited to 99 miles an hour. Now its performance isn't exactly going to set your world alight, specifically if you compare it with more expensive all-wheel drive alternatives. With that said, for a vehicle of its price, category and indeed target market, going from 0 to 60 miles an hour in a mere 6.83 seconds is certainly impressive and should certainly suffice for a lot of consumers. Now what's more important to highlight however is the overall driving comfort. Now first off, I would like to reiterate that this has got a front wheel drive configuration, which does have its certain advantages, but in my case, when I was a little bit too fruity on the accelerator pedal, I did find that the vehicle suffered from torque steer, in other words, some front wheel spin. 
This was, however, only present if I was putting my foot down to the metal from a standstill to, let's say, 60 miles an hour, or if I was exiting a bend on wetter tarmac. So therefore, I just had to be a little bit more careful when going on those winding country routes. Something worth pointing out over here, especially if you compare and contrast it with some rear-wheel drive alternatives, let alone the more expensive all-wheel drive vehicles out there on the market. What is impressive, however, is the stopping power that you have on the Atto 3. This is thanks in part due to the fact that you have got ventilated disc brakes that come fitted as standard across the entire trim range, and therefore it gives you a good degree of confidence if you have to brake in an emergency situation, which isn't the same that could be said about some of its competitors. Better still, its suspension system is quite bouncy and soft, making it fantastic if you're going to be pottering around town as it soaks up a lot of the anomalies, speed bumps and potholes. This is due to the fact that you have got a Macpherson setup at the front and a multi-link setup at the rear. This comes fitted as standard across the entire trim range. On the flip side, however, the vehicle isn't exactly that well coped with going around winding country routes. You will suffer from quite a bit of body roll, and the fact that you don't have that utmost sense of connection with the steering wheel, even in terms of its sport mode preset, means that it's not going to compete with some sportier alternatives. Now another thing that will really impact your overall driving experience is cabin noise and thankfully over here the BYD Auto 3 is really well insulated both at lower and higher speeds and therefore means that you're going to get a serene in-cabin experience. Now this does actually perfectly bring me onto its interior design which certainly does stand out in comparison to some of its rivals. Love it or hate it the manufacturer has gone for a youthful look. Now here you have got these hairdryer looking speakers slash door handles. You've got these Lego pieces that have been attached on all of the doors and you've even got these guitar strings towards the bottom where it serves for your storage compartment. These can be a little bit problematic if you have children and equally if you're going to be listening to music at louder volumes you'll hear a little bit of rattle. Nonetheless towards the center console you've got this aircraft looking yoke and then you've also got these dumbbells which serve as your air vents throughout the cabin. Now we're curious to know what you make of the overall look of of the BYD Atta 3 down in the comment section below. Now aside from its quirky design we should talk about the other elements that are comprised within the cabin and first off you've got a fully digitalized 5 inch instrument cluster which gives you all the key information that you'll require and the safety systems that are in operation. It's also somewhat customizable. Then of course you've got the center display. This is 12.8 inch in some of the trims and this moves over to a 15.6 inch display in the top spec design trim. Now, no matter which model you go for, you will find that the screen itself is rotatable, which is actually quite a novelty. Indeed, this can be handy in certain scenarios. For example, if you're going to be reading your maps or navigating, you might want it in a portrait format. And if you're consuming media, you might want it in a landscape format. Now, it is worth noting, however, that with the use of Android Auto, I did notice that the portrait format was not supported. So it's just some food for thought. Now on that note, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are supported over a wired and wireless connection, which is certainly appreciated and one up some of its competitors, for example the likes of Tesla. Now what isn't as good however, is the overall buggy nature of the software. See here I first found that Android Auto would pause music as soon as I was going onto a different app. For example, if I was listening to music and looking at my navigation on Android Auto, and then going to the vehicle settings, the music would suddenly stop. Equally, sometimes I found this to be an occurrence if I was going into reverse, and that can be quite cumbersome and frustrating. Hopefully BYD can address this with a future firmware update. Similarly over here, when it comes to the overall brightness levels of the screen itself, it is actually linked with the lighting system, which obviously makes sense. You can disable this nature if you so wish, but doing so, you'll find that the overall brightness of the display is somewhat bugged. You'll have to enable and disable it a few times for it to actually respond to your overall changes. Here again, I think BYD can address this via future firmware updates, but at least at the time of filming and in the UK on this test vehicle, this was not the case. So it's just worth considering. Now with that said, the infotainment system is actually pretty intuitively laid out and also very responsive. You've also got a pretty intelligent voice control system, which allows you to, for example, operate certain features. For example, just opening up the sunroof by using your voice only. It actually does work a treat. Elsewhere, you've also got a punchy eight speaker audio system, which does well across the sound frequency range. You've got two speakers positioned within each of the four doors. If you want a detailed breakdown of the audio system, make sure you check out my dedicated audio review that can be found upon your pop banner or by following the links down in the description below or the pinned comments. Moving swiftly on, let's talk about storage. And here it's actually pretty impressive. 
Within the cabin, you have got the glove box, which has actually been optimized for right-hand drive vehicles. Then towards the center console, you've got a wireless charger, which comes fitted as standard with a non-slip material underneath it, preventing your phone from flying out when you're accelerating. Then further down, you've got two cup holders, one of which has actually got a small little insert, which allows you to have smaller size cups. So great thinking by the manufacturer. And you've also got a very large compartment found within the center armrest. Better still, you've got an open non-slip area that is found underneath the center console. And here you'll find a singular USB type C and type A port and also a 12 volt socket. You'll find a further type C and type A ports that are found towards the rear of the center console. Now, as for the door bins, the front two are relatively large and will accommodate a 500 milliliter bottle, while the rear two are a little bit more limited. Thankfully, you do have a pull down armrest compartment, which reveals two cup holders. Now, of course, when it comes to storage, we have to talk about its boots. And here you've got 440 litres to play around with, or if you drop down the seats, 1,338 litres. This should certainly suffice for a lot of consumers, although it's not exactly class-leading figures, at least for an SUV. Nonetheless, you've got a hatchback design, making it quite practical, and you've even got an electric tailgate that comes fitted as standard in the top-spec design trim. Better still, you've got a humongous underfloor compartment, making it quite handy if you want to compartmentalise the boot, or, of course, if you want to take your charging cables. You do also have a flat loading bay and 60-40 rear split folding seats. It is worth noting, however, that there is no front compartment, in other words, a storage compartment at the front of the vehicle. Quite a shame given that there is actually quite a bit of space that the manufacturer could have worked with. So next up, let's talk about comfort. And here all the seats are accommodating and soft. At the front and rear of the cabin, I'd also had no problems whatsoever when it came to headroom or legroom. Just as a reference, I'm just under six foot. Furthermore, it's great to see that the manufacturer has optimized the rear footwell design, keeping it completely flat, meaning the rear middle occupant won't be left uncomfortable on those longer journeys. However, the same couldn't be quite said at the front of the cabin, due to the integrated headrest being propped out a little bit. At least for my sake, I found it to be a little bit more uncomfortable on those longer drives. And this is also due to the fact that you have not got lumbar support. What you do have, however, are six-way electronic controls for your driver and four-way electronic controls for your passenger, both front seats are also heated. Better still, you've got a panoramic sunroof with an electric sunshade, all of which come featured as standard, which isn't the same that could be said about the vast majority of its competitors. Another thing that's quite impressive is that the manufacturers provide you free color options, allowing you to match your personality with the exterior design of the vehicle, and therefore means that you've got the ability to choose between blue, red, gray, white, or green. Now I'd be curious to know what you make of its exterior design down in the comments section below, but subjectively I've got no complaints whatsoever. Towards the front it's pretty cute thanks to its bonnet and headlight design. Towards the side you've got a pretty sporty flair thanks to the 18 inch alloys, and while I would have preferred body coloured wheel arches and side skirts, they don't exactly take away too much from its exterior look. As for the rear profile, I really do like what the manufacturer's done with the tail lights extending the entire width of the vehicle. Now elsewhere, I would just like to point out that its roof load capacity is rated at 50 kilograms, thanks to the integrated rails, which come fitted as standard across the entire trim range. This perfectly brings me on to safety. And here, the Atto 3 scored a full 5 out of 5 stars on Euro NCAPS crash tests, scoring 91% in adult occupancy, 89% in child occupancy, and 75% in its safety assist scores. Indeed, it does well across the board. Better still, you've got a plethora of driver assistance systems that come featured as standard across the entire trim range, which is certainly refreshing. Here you've got high beam assist, blind spot detection, door opening warning, adaptive cruise control with intelligent cruise control, which actually does work a treat by keeping you at a safe distance from the leading vehicle and not feeling too jerky. You've also got intelligent speed limit info and speed limit control, although I did find this was often wrong and therefore not giving the right sort of traffic sign recognition system on my infotainment system or indeed the instrument cluster in comparison to what I could see on the road. And on that note, it has also got a traffic sign recognition system. You have also got forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking system, rear collision warning, rear cross traffic alert, lane change assist, lane keep assistance, which can also be disabled, and emergency lane keep assist. Although the latter will need to be disabled every single time you power on the vehicle. And I did find it to be a little bit intrusive, specifically while driving around the country roads. Now, when you thought it couldn't get any better, it actually does, because the Atto 3 comes as standard across the entire trim range with front and rear parking sensors and high resolution 360 degree cameras, therefore giving you peace of mind when it comes to parking the vehicle. 
On that note, maneuverability is a breeze because you've got a turning circle of 10.7 meters and visibility is excellent at the front, side and rear, as you've also got a wiper included at the rear of the vehicle. So with all that in mind, should you be buying the BYD Atto 3? Well, it really all boils down to what you're actually looking for. If you want something that's relatively comfortable to drive, at least if you're going to be pottering around town, has got a decent electric range and performance, has got a plethora of driver assistance systems and a good use of technology within the cabin, all of which come featured as standard, a decent amount of legroom and headroom for your rear occupants and a good boot capacity, then arguably the BYD Atto 3 should be one of your top picks. If, however, you want something that's got a little bit more of a familiar interior design, something that packs a little bit of an extra punch when it comes to your overall performance or indeed driving dynamics, or of course a vehicle that actually has got a better electric range, then you should consider some of the alternatives, some of which you'll read and be down in the description below for your own consideration. Now we'd be curious to know if you would pick the BYD Atto 3 over some of its rivals. Let us know down in the comment section below. Now, of course, if you have enjoyed this detailed independent review, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been Chris from Totally EV and I hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.